My nearly 100 year old house is beautiful and special, but it has some weird layout issues. Most notably, there are two giant doors on either side of the world's smallest bathroom and a shallow but super wide pantry. Over the past year, I was attempting to work with the existing layout for both spaces with moderate success, but then I had an idea that changed everything. Hey everybody, welcome back to Reissued. If you're new here, my name is Andrew. In a couple recent videos, I mentioned that I was thinking about opening up a doorway from the back of my pantry through into my living room. And this past weekend, my parents and I made it happen. So I thought it would be fun to share that process with you guys, maybe offer a couple tips and tricks about working with plaster walls, demoing them, repairing them if necessary. And then of course, there's gonna be a before and after. It's not completely finished. There's still some trim to go around the door and the living room is still in its very early stages. But I still think it's really exciting to see a doorway open up between these two spaces, merging them together, letting that light come through. The flow is gonna be so much better. Can't wait to show you guys. Let's jump in. As I mentioned in my recent home tour video, the living room has been more or less a holding area for lots of random stuff. So let's clear it out a bit. The cabinets were purchased to work with the existing bathroom door in place. But since we are reconfiguring the space and closing off that door, we can arrange the cabinets around what will be our new doorway. And they look even better like this. Now that we've cleared the spot, let's be sure that the structural support is taken care of. Luckily, the attic access that we created is right above the pantry, so we're able to see where the studs are and offer extra support where our door will go. Rather than cutting out a huge hole in the wall and installing a standard header, we can screw two 2x6s to the studs across where the new opening will be. This is not a load-bearing wall, so that helps, but we also don't want the door opening to sag over time. Not too bad. Next, we need to remove the baseboard on the living room side. We're doing built-ins all over this wall, so I thought it would be smart to harvest the historic baseboards to use in other parts of the house if necessary. And the walls were full of dirt, straw, and fallen plaster chunks. Fun! Let's remove all that crap and pop in some insulation instead, before screwing on some scrap wood to cover the holes. Next, we can draw out the opening. We want to match the dimensions and placement of the pantry doorway exactly, so we measure and draw it out on the pantry side. Then we drill through the wall at a couple points to transfer that placement to the living room side. After connecting the dots and correcting the shape with the level, I can start cutting the layers of paint with a sharp blade. While my dad screws down the beadboard around the outside of our lines to secure it, I start chiseling away at the plaster. I hit it a couple times in each spot to break through the outer layer of plaster. As I continue along the line, the break goes all the way down to the lats. Most of the walls in my house are still the original plaster, meaning that they are basically sand. So I need to be careful to only remove the parts that we want to remove to avoid patching. We ended up having to patch large areas in the kitchen, and I never, ever, ever want to do that again. Meanwhile, my dad cuts along the lines on the pantry side with the circular saw and unscrews the places where the center beadboard is attached. Screw this at the bottom under the baseboard. Probably, yeah. Yep. Gotta lose the baseboard too to get at the final screws. And it's out. One layer done. See why we put up the beadboard in the first place? The plaster underneath was a total mess. I switch over to that side, chiseling around the edges and removing large chunks of plaster. This part was so satisfying. And Queenie loved it too. So one of the big reasons that I wanted to open up a doorway between these two spaces is that I love in this house and in a lot of older homes how all the rooms kind of connect to each other and it creates a nice kind of circular flow and it lets light in from a lot of different sources. So in my house, there was currently a pass through from the kitchen into the bathroom, which technically did connect all the rooms, but it's kind of a situation of like, if I have guests over and they want to take their food from the kitchen into the living room, it's like no one's going to want to pass through a half bathroom, right? So better to make it like a butler's pantry and make that pantry the pass-through. 
Additionally, that bathroom already has such little privacy, so I felt like walling off there would kind of like give it a little bit more privacy. And then with that walled off, there would be literally no way to get between the two rooms. So this just made the most sense overall. I stopped plaster removal on the living room side because part of the wall was feeling very soft and unstable. In an attempt to resolve this, we employed a plaster repair process that we had tons of experience with in the kitchen. Basically, drill holes in the plaster where the lats are. Squirt a conditioning liquid into the holes to wet the plaster. Then inject an adhesive into the holes that will glue the plaster back to the lats. And finish by screwing into nearby holes to hold the plaster against the lats until the glue dries. We had purchased a kit called Plaster Magic for the kitchen, which worked great. But once we ran out of the original materials, we started to experiment with less expensive options, meaning watered down glue for the conditioning liquid and standard construction adhesive for the glue. All right, end of day one, and you can see a little bit of light coming in between the two rooms, which is very exciting. We reached a good stopping point for today. We got the glue in, and so we'll give that some time to dry. We'll definitely leave the screws in throughout the process tomorrow, just so that glue can really dry. But when we come in tomorrow, I'll continue chipping away at the wall, getting that opened up, and then we'll work on starting to cut out the lats and the two by fours and everything in between. Can't wait to step through this doorway. It's gonna be incredible. And we're back at it. I finished removing the plaster before my dad cuts around the opening again with the circular saw to cut the lats. I finish removing them while he removes the rest of the baseboard on the other side. Now let's ditch the remaining plaster. Can you come through? Step through the door. Can you come through? <gasps> Yay! Good girl! <laughs> to build out the structure over the door, two by threes are screwed together in an L shape and then inserted into the wall. One end is screwed to the stud that is within the wall and the other is screwed to the top of the exposed stud that we'll be removing. One more piece in the middle to connect everything. And now for the fun part. Let's finish this. We remove the two by fours and then reuse them for the sides of the door. Some scrap wood to make the casing and we're done for now at least. Both sides of the door still need moldings and paint and all that, but it's a usable doorway. All right, y'all, it's before and after time. I hope you like this one. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you wanna see more like this, hit the subscribe button. You know what to do. Now let's see how our new doorway looks.
Do you love to have people hear you in the background with your long nails? <laughs> Run! Run! 